Throughout history, we women have had to put up with a lot to maintain those unattainable beauty standards. For instance, I wear these ridiculous hair extensions. Check them out. Oh my God, they get caught, they're painful. In today's unboxing, we're gonna show you one of the most extreme measures of being beautiful in ancient China and actually in all of history. It's foot binding, something that I would never ever wanna do. It sounds incredibly painful. Let us know in the comments below what your beauty pain is since I shared mine. And make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the amazing acquisitions that come through our warehouse. Here at the Ripley's Believe It or Not warehouse, we've been incredibly busy preparing for the reopening of the Niagara Falls Auditorium, as well as the grand opening of Amsterdam. Exhibits for our vaults are going back out into the world to be displayed, and new exhibits keep coming in pretty much every day. It's like Christmas. This box came in just this morning, and I'm so excited to see what's inside. Let's check it out. Pretty light. All right, so there's a bunch of individually wrapped items in here. I'll take them all out first. All right, let's check this out. These are quintessential Ripley's Believe It or Not. These are more than just shoes. These are a means to an ancient and really serious body modification, foot binding. It's just like a tiny waist in Victoria and England would mean the height of female refinement. So let's check out these other pairs. Oh my gosh, these are amazing. The colors are supposed to evoke the lotus flower that they were actually designed after. I'm hoping that some of these actually have curled toes because that was a... S Sorry, distracted. These are the smallest ones I've ever seen. Oh my God. This is what, like maybe an inch and a half, two inches? The ideal bound foot was three inches. So that just blew my mind a little bit. This is a huge collection. This is awesome. Right? The heels actually have a little bit of a weight, even though they're cloth shoes. And I'm wondering if that had to play a part in actually breaking the heel itself down. The first recorded binding occurred in the 10th century. According to lore, Emperor Li Yu built a gilded stage in the shape of a lotus for his favorite concubine to dance upon. Dancing on her toes, her feet were bound in a hoof-like shape and adorned with precious stones and ribbons. As this young woman was the emperor's favorite, women attempted to emulate and imitate her in order to gain the emperor's favor, making the practice very fashionable. So from the royal court, foot binding spread throughout China, beginning in the south of the country and soon reaching the north. In the 12th century, the practice had become much, much more widespread. By the mid 17th century, every girl who wished to marry and marry rich had to have her feet bound. The most desirable bride would possess a three inch foot. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be single forever. The ideal three inch fit would fit perfectly into these shoes. And as you can see, they're all made of fabric and typically silk, but have a really, really firm heel. And some of them actually, like this one, have this little flap on the end that represents the lotus flower's leaves. The foot binding process begins in childhood when a girl is only about five to six years old, and it's typically carried out by an elder female, but there's no way the girl's mother could actually do it because she'd be way too sympathetic for the child's pain typically a grandmother or even a future mother-in-law. So first her feet were plunged into either hot water or a mixture of animal blood and herbs, followed by her toenails being clipped super short and her legs and feet being massaged and oiled. Here is when it turns from a relaxing spa day into kind of a nightmare. Every single toe, except the large toe, would be broken and bound flat against the sole of the foot, making kind of a triangle shape. The foot would then be double bent, straining the arch, and to secure this into position, the feet were browned with silk strips measuring 10 feet long and two inches wide. These wrappings would be briefly removed every two days to prevent infection, because that tight binding meant circulation was not happening and any injury would not heal properly. But over time, those wrappings became tighter and tighter, the shoes smaller and smaller, and the feet was slowly crushed together. Throughout this process, which took about two years to complete, the girls were even encouraged to walk long distances to hasten the breaking of their arches. Ugh. In some ways, ballet is kind of a contemporary form of foot binding. Dancers who start point work too young or dance nightly can break bones and permanently damage their muscle structure. 
Believe it or not, Bill Nye the Science Guy holds a patent for ballet point shoes. Bill, 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 Bill. Because foot binding ended in the early 20th century when Christian missionaries outlawed the practice, lily slippers are no longer produced. The last factory to manufacture these shoes ended production in 1998, and due to this, our collection is stemmed from a private collector, the late Herman Mark Lizauer. Before you hit the road, let us know what you think in the comments and give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.